Hi there, it's Connie Ray. Welcome to Connie Ray's Craft Room. Today I have a gorgeous craft to share for you, which is using our Christmas time rose from the Christmas time uh, suite that is coming out on the 1st of November, available for customers then. So um, I've done a previous project using this one um, and I really do love it because you can use it for anything, not just Christmas, but also for birthdays and, you know, it, it's just such a fun um, set. So um, I've created this one. I've got a class tomorrow where I'm doing some classes and um, I was in the middle of packing everything and I had this idea. I wanted to do a vellum rose. I love roses. And so I did. But then what happened? I decided to use some crystal effects and some shimmer eyes, or eye stamping glitter. So hence we have this one. But it is really pretty. Hopefully you can see, I've tried to adjust my lighting so that you can see the colors that I've used. Um, you can see the shimmery effects on this gorgeous rose. It's absolutely beautiful. So this will make a really nice Christmas card or a birthday card or a gift giving card. Um, I have kept my um, card on the small side because I like to work with a smaller canvas. This card size is seven by five and it's scored at three and a half so it will make a card which is three and a half by five so pretty easy and you can get um two out of a piece of cardstock so um yeah there's plenty of room here this is big enough you just have to make an envelope i do believe um we have got envelopes um and this will fit in our standard envelope but it's probably a little bit on the bigger side so it's up to you how you want to go about doing that okay so getting on with this gorgeous tutorial this is the christmas rose set part of it there is um i've actually packed it in my box in my box to go but when it does become available i'll include all the links down the bottom in the show more section don't forget to subscribe subscribe if you're not a current subscriber and hit the little bell icon and even if you are a subscriber and you haven't hit the bell icon you can still do that what that does is it tells you when i upload a new tutorial for you so thank you very much for joining me and doing that so um this is the one that I'm using, which is this massive stamp. Um, I've actually got it in my Stamparatus, so there's no point in seeing it. And the dies that come with it, we've got this die that cuts out the rose beautifully. So not a lot, no fussy cutting, which is always a good thing, isn't it? I like fussy cutting though occasionally. And I've also used the Itty Bitty Christmas. Um, this is currently available and it's in the well, actually, I'll include the link down the bottom. However, it is available and it's called the Itty Bitty Christmas. And I have said this before, but any of the Itty Bitty line, um, greetings, birthday, whatever, I really like them because they're just perfect to fit onto a card and they make that gorgeous um, balance. It doesn't have to be large. It just has to be there. So that's what I'm using. And I'm using the Season's Greetings. Also using some... Um, what am I using? Seaside Spray, which is one of the current colours. And I'm using the Seaside Spray, uh, let me just check my notes. Oh, 2019-2001, sorry, 2021 DSP in colour collection. And this is the one that I'm using, is that one. And my card, of course. But what I'll do is I'll just get on and show you how I've done it and we'll chat as we go. So first of all, we're going to need our cardstock. Oh, sorry, we're going to need a piece of vellum. So if you haven't used vellum before, this is a really good one to use. I've already put my um, vellum into my Stamparatus. And you'll see here, I like to include less one little space here and one little space down the side and put my cardstock or um, my whatever it is I'm stamping on just within that bracket so that I've got plenty of room to move. Now with vellum you do need to be very cautious when you're heat embossing it but it will work um, and you need to make sure that you use your stamping buddy so i'm going to um embossing buddy stamping buddy huh? embossing buddy so make sure that you cover it really well with that so that you get rid of all the static and all the sticky bits Make sure it's all lined up. 
and I'm going to be using Versamark because Versamark is what you need when you are embossing. That's my preferred method. You can use other colored um, stamps, but I prefer um, to use Versamark. So we're going to be stamping it up really well. Make sure you're getting into, I mean, you can, when you're using a stamp artist, you can do it more than once. You can stamp down and re-stamp if you want, but ideally, if you can avoid that, well then, you know, practice makes perfect as they say. So we just want to make sure we've got plenty of ickiness on our stamp so that our embossing powder will stick to it. I try to make the light brighter and my hands kind of look a bit creepy, don't they? Good for Halloween. Because <laughs> I wanted you to be able to see the effects of the, um, the shimmery effects and stuff. So, all good. Hopefully that's gone on well. And from what I can see, even though you may not be able to see it, from what I can see, it looks like it's covered it fairly well. So that's good. So we get the Stamparatus out of the way. And then we are going to be using some white embossing powder. And I did think to myself before that if you wanted to, you could do this in silver or even copper. Try it. No harm in trying. Okay, and we need some white embossing powder. Actually, I was trying out, um, this was a card that I was just popped into my head and I've been wanting to do this for ages. Well, this technique on vellum, because I love vellum. And I thought to myself, hmm, it's, um, it's great, you know, without the shimmery effects. But then I put the shimmery effects on to the actual um, design and I was done. I can tell you now doesn't matter what you do once you put that stuff on you can't oh, can't unsee it just making sure this is really well covered as you can see hopefully you can see I have turned as I said turn my light up uh, yep that's not a part of it yep that's good so as you can see that bit there I must have missed that part with my embossing buddy or I had some maybe previously there so you can just brush that off that's not going to be um, I think does that look like it's actually missing a bit I think it does hmm let me see oh no no that's right no it's not let me see I think what's happened is it's actually missed okay so we just need to stamp that again okay so I'm back and this is now done properly as you can see so what we're going to do is we are going to use our heat gun Turn it on and get it nice and hot before you um, do anything. I'm not going to delete that part where I missed that stamping thing because it is quite common and it's good to see other people do make um, not so much mistakes but you do experience times when you miss things and stuff like especially when you're working with things like vellum which is very transparent and also um, you know things that you, it's very difficult to see so I thought I might just leave that one there. Um, that previous episode and um, I'm going to carry on because that's just life isn't it okay so as I said I'm just heating up my gun now so the best thing with vellum is to and I, I don't want to put it onto my table because I'm scared that it's going to it will warp my paper let me just see if I can yeah I can do that hang on a sec all right so it's just, um, it heats and embosses exactly the same way as it does with paper. It's quite quick. It's just best to have a hot gun and move around it. Don't leave the gun directly on your embossing. Just move it around. So we'll just see how we go. Yeah, there you go. As you can see, it just takes off really quickly. 
And if it does get a bit funny, just stick it under a book or something. To be honest, I, I find it pretty much the same as doing any kind of embossing. You just don't ever hold your gun directly onto something for too long. And some people hold things up close too, so sometimes you don't really need to. Sometimes being back a little bit works just as well. Nearly done, if not all done. Just turn that off and yeah, that looks pretty good to me. I'm not sure if that's on the back or the front. It might be on the back, but that's okay. Oh, sorry, my lighting and I was just checking out my embossing. Okay, looks good to me. So now that we've done that, and as you can see, it's not warped, it's fine. And if there is something about it that you don't like, just stick it under a book for a while or just roll it a bit it'll come back into shape but whatever you do don't just sit there with the gun move the gun around okay so I'll bring my stuff back into shot Whoop, there we go all right so I'll leave that there and I will cut this out with um, my die so what I'll do is I'll show you how the die goes pretty easy very good die it cuts really close to the actual um, picture which I really love and I think most crafters do. So you're getting a nice clean cut around your um, oh, your image. So I'm just going to stick that down with a little bit of tape. You can use washi tape, you can use um, purple tape, pink tape. You can use whatever tape you like. But don't just um, stick it down and, and um, too much because you want it to come off. It's only a temporary measure. I adjusted my lighting while I was doing that. Um, re um, inking. Okay. Lovely. All right, so I'm going to go off and I am going to cut this through the machine. Okay, so as you can see, it cuts out beautifully out of my vellum. Keep your pieces of vellum because you can use them like most stuff. Oh, chuck it out. Up to you. All right, so there is the image ready to go onto our card or well, our DSP and our card. Now, the next thing we're going to do is I am going to do my um, shimmering crystal effects and my icing ice stamping glitter i never get the names right okay so here's the thing i've learned about this stuff um <laughs> obviously not much um number one store it upside down like store it upside down i find that it works really good if you've got it facing down the other thing that i i with this card is that i felt like even though you can't see it at the moment and at the moment it does look nice and glittery and pretty I think you can overdo it because I did the middle and like in real life you probably can't see it at the moment but in real life I think it might be a tad much so what I'm going to do is I am just going to go around the outside like yay actually I'll get that out of the way and I'm just going to go around the outside with my um crystal shimmery effect stuff <laughs> I can't think and talk at the same time but I do find it very difficult okay so I'm just going around the outline and I think I might just go up the sides of the leaves a little bit but not too much Yeah, I found if you store this upside down, it actually comes out really well. Um, if you don't store it upside down, you end up with um, having to shake the craze out of it. And, you know, you end up with RSI. So don't be afraid to store it upside down. 
Okay. And I think I think that might be enough. Okay. So just pop that down like that. Store that upside down. And we will just get a piece of scrap paper. And we will glitter it to death. Yes, we will glitter it to death. So I'm just going to sprinkle this gorgeous stuff everywhere. It's so good for Christmas, isn't it? Phew! <laughs> okay. It doesn't matter if it's Christmas or not, really, when it comes to glitter. Who doesn't like a little bit of shimmer? It always makes you feel good, doesn't it? I suppose. Well, it makes me feel good. But, yeah, I'm sure there's people who don't like it. <gasps> Shameful. All right, so I'm just going to shake it off. Okay. Now, you can't see that. I'm just going to tip, 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 tap, tap, tap. Um, it's going to be very difficult for you to see, but it is on the outside. And it... Mm, I think maybe I might go around. Let me just tip this back into here. Might go around the rose, just the outline of the rose. Because before I did go, oh no, I did do the outline of the rose, but I think I went right into the center. And I think I'm just going to do the, the first outline bits. We'll see. I tend to get a bit carried away. So I'll just do the basic outline of it. You know, really, at the end of the day, you do what you like. So if you like lots of it, covering it, just be careful you don't make it too heavy. But it should be fine once it dries. I don't see the big deal about it. Yep, there we go. So I'll just put that away. So pretty. Okay. Looks like ends up looking like a snowflake. A really big snowflake. It looks lovely. All right. Yeah, I think that's good. I don't think I need to do any more. Oh, look. There's a bit that I missed. Well, maybe I didn't miss, but I just decided that I'm going to do it. There's a little bit there. Just, to, I think the outer leaves, it looks really good on the outer leaves of the rose. But if you go too far in, I think it can look a little bit cluttered or, you know, scrunched up. So enough is enough. All right, we'll do that. Hmm. I think it is a little bit tricky to see, but you can see glimmers of it anyway. And of course, in real life, it's just so much prettier. Okay, so we'll put that aside and we will do the other bits and pieces while that is drying. So what I did with um, my rooms, is that I popped it into my paper. Just leave it dry a, a little bit more before you do anything. And then once it's kind of a little bit dry, just pop a block on it to flatten it a bit. So we'll just pop that over there for now while that's doing its thing. And we will come back to the construction of the card. It doesn't take long to do this one. It's just um, the initial stages. So I have already pre-cut my bits and pieces so my designer series paper i have used the um, stitched rectangles dies and i have cut out the i wish they'd number these things because it's really hard i number them and, and i can't even tell you what number it is now but anyway you will find it it's um, going to fit this 
look you can have it the same size or you can have it I just find it a little bit smaller with the sides hanging off the edge make it look a little bit better creates like a flow so for me I use that size for that and with the stitch rectangle dies I also used the greetings and I cut the greetings out using that small sentiment so with the smaller itty bitty greetings you can use that one quite well and also with the itty bitty greetings a lot of them will fit into your um your punch uh what punch is it called um there's one punch uh Label, it's a labels punch that's are still currently available and a lot of the itty bitty greetings will fit into that punch so that's really handy as well but if they don't fit into the punch they'll fit into this and of course with the rectangle dies there's a lot that you can fit in so anyway we're using season's greetings and i have previously stamped that with our uh, seaside spray so i am just going to <laughs> did you see that that was like magic okay <laughs> put some dimensionals on and I put um, five dimensionals on this one because I wanted the middle bit to stand up So we're just going to center this. My head wasn't in there, was it? Okay, we're going to center that off. We are going to then put, put some dimensionals on our sentiment. And I used um, five of these you can see I've been playing around with the back of my um, one of my stamp sets with the back of this. Um, but this is good though, because you don't waste it then. Okay, so oh, I won't take those off just yet. I'll do that in a second. All right, so that's the dimensionals out of the way. And we'll see how our little um, icon is going. Look, it might be a bit damp based on um, this current tutorial, but you know, it's okay. I will work it out. All right, the good thing about this, and a lot of th this is always an issue with um, vellum, is how to glue it down without it being seen. Because often, more often than not, the um, glue shows behind. So with this image, though, the good thing about it is you've got some very solid spots. So you've got one here, 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 and there's some over there. And that's perfect for sticking it down. Now, I used um, dimensionals to do this. You can use the little ones or the big ones because it will give you plenty of coverage. Use the white dimensionals, don't use your dark ones. So I'm just going to turn this over because this isn't quite dry. So I'm going to do this the difficult way. Normally, oh, I might be able to turn it over just for the sake of this tutorial. Stick it down there. So you can do this. It's a really great um, image to actually stick down because you can't see your glue or your dimensionals uh, or the whatever you use if you don't want to use glue you can use whatever you've got behind it and it gives you enough just enough okay so now looking at this one i placed my image that way so i'm going to do the same thing Okay, today would be good. <laughs> you know, when you just want to do things and you just can't because things don't want to cooperate. Okay, so we've got this image with a bit of the paper in. Yeah, that looks good. There we go. I'm just going to press that down lightly. Because it's going to end up with it. It's not too bad. Not too bad at all. It's almost dry. It doesn't take long to dry. That um, crystal effects. And then we are going to pop our little sentiment on.
hopefully straight and then we are going to put on some gorgeous little embellishments and oh I've got glue and stuff all over me okay so I have got here some of the basic rhinestones and some of the epoxy um, I think they're called um, clear epoxy droplets that's what they're called I just need to get my little duvalaki there we go all right so I'm going to put the big ones on first because I think it's best to place the bigger ones first you, you can of course use whatever you like here I think I've got this up a little bit further or something like that there's more space on this one but that's okay and we are going to use these gorgeous little blue bellies okay maybe there we go and maybe one more oh upside down and there i think that's good and there you go how is that not a hard card to do not at all it just takes a little bit of once you've done the first one i think you'll be fine so there you go isn't it beautiful it's absolutely beautiful it's a lovely christmas card and i really think that if i got one of these in the mail i would be pretty happy so there you go i hope you enjoyed this tutorial please do like share subscribe so i can bring you more tutorials um thanks for stopping by please hit the like button please hit the subscribe button and also hit the little bell and all the product information when they the stamp set's not available yet the rose stamp set um sorry the christmas time is here stamp set will be available to all the customers from the first of november and like i've said a hundred times and i know i'm repeating myself that this is a gorgeous stamp set and the reason i love it the most is because you can use it for birthdays you don't have to use it just for Christmas. So this is a really great set that you can get. And it's going to give you lots of longevity out of it. So, And this is another technique. And hopefully I'll find another one. I don't know. I'll keep trying. So, um, yep, everything you need will be linked down the bottom. You hit the show more button. And all the information about how to purchase is this. You can just go online and sh shop with me through the shop 24-7. Just go click the link and it'll take you to the shop. You don't have to join. There's... It's just like a normal online shop. I don't know. Some people get a bit confused about stamping up. There's number one, they're surprised it's available in Australia. And number two, they think they have to join. Well, you don't have to join. You can just purchase. You join if you want 20% off or 25% off, but you don't have to. You can just go in and purchase. It's up to you. So, And that's the beauty about Stampin' Up. It's got all these fabulous products in one place. You just go click, click, click. Then you go to the checkout and you have a heart attack because of the price that you've got at the end of it and you go oh okay i might need to delete something but you never normally do and then you're off stamping so thank you very much for joining me take care and i will see you with a new tutorial very soon bye for now